So the way you're going to know about what's actually going on out there and if it's true is being out with your people and making sure that you're there to support them but also to be able to sort of challenge them. Again, I'm delighted to have Sue Barrett with me. Welcome back, Sue. Thank you, John. Hey, Sue, we talked about the salesperson being a creator in our last discussion, and, and I love the discussion. Thank you very much. I've also heard you talk about sales managers as being the renaissance sales manager. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think I like the concept where you know, the sales managers have to get back to the old type of sales manager. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you really mean. Yes, we have a bit of an art theme going on, don't we, with curators <laughs> and renaissance and uh, those sorts of You've things. You've obviously got an interest in art by the sound no, of just it. Just a wee bit. Um, I think really um, when you go back, I mean, my father gave me a book just uh, not long before he died, circa 1960, called How to Hire and Manage Your Sales Men. Now, okay, the title was a wee bit sexist, but in there it was all about caring for your people, caring for your salespeople, but also being out there with them and doing the training, doing regular coaching, you know, getting people together and looking at how we can keep it, continuing it to develop and adjust and, and really be successful out there. So when I look at that book, you know, a lot of the common sense that was in there um, is what we need today. I remember we had a discussion uh, last year sometime where you talked about the fact that we invest so heavily in our salespeople and their sale, the training and development, sometimes we forget the sales managers. So oh, yeah. you're really saying, hey, let's get back to sales managers being true sales managers mm -hmm. and not the spreadsheet guy or the forecasting guy or the, the manager up and let's go and spend some time with our salespeople. Absolutely. I mean, we do need to look at the numbers, but we also have to appreciate too that the numbers themselves will never be a linear process and they'll never be 100% predictable. So the way you're going to know about what's actually going on out there and if it's true is being out with your people and making sure that you're there to support them but also to be able to sort of challenge them when you know they might be getting a bit down or they're, they're looking at things from a, perhaps a perspective that's not helpful. So we're there to really guide and help them along the way. As I said, sales managers were the chief training manager of their people back in the you know mm -hmm. 60s and 70s, um, they were the person out there making sure that you know there was regular get-togethers, huddles, call them what you will. But we were always looking at how, like a, like a sports team, always looking at how to be fit and healthy and, and learning from each other, exactly, and, and sharing, encouraging those. each other, and yep, so on. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. there's a, there's a, a question I'd, I'd love to get the answer to from your point of view, and that is what percentage of time should a sales manager in their overall job spend in the field or with their salespeople versus doing management type tasks? Okay, well the question we have to ask before that is how many salespeople should a manager actually be responsible for directly? Okay. Well that's going to vary from environment to environment. Well it is, it? it is and it depends if they're full time as well because a lot of sales managers are also given sales targets to meet as well and this is just creates lots of confusion. So in small teams I can understand these hybrid roles but a sales manager can successfully manage people about say 8 to 10 max. I right? agree. So I around agree. that number. So well, how much time then should they be investing in their people out in the field and how should they help them? The, the, the rough sort of split would be 60-70% in the field. Right. Okay. And, and I've heard others say, like, work the 80-20 rule if you possibly can, but it's tough. Yeah. And because they have got data to manage, they've got reports to, and they've got stakeholders to manage up and across and you know, laterally as well. So they've got to have time to do that and they've got to have their own quiet time. Because a sales manager, a good one, is both analytical and empathetic. Right. And they've got to be able to balance those two. They're, they're a rare breed and I think it's the hardest people management job going around. Oh, I think it is. Um, <laughs> been there and done that, and, and sometimes I've succeeded, sometimes I've failed. Mm. It's a really tough gig, mm. tough, tough gig. Mm. So let's let's wrap this discussion up. What are the what are the key things a sales manager has to think about to be a renaissance sales manager? Then, okay, they need to make sure that they are there as leaders for their salespeople. Emphasis on whether the word leaders versus manager. Well, manage you manage things and you lead people. Mm. So they're lead, they, they've got to manage data and those sorts of things, but they're there as leaders of their team. They're also there as the ambassador for the organisation about the sales efforts of the business. Mm -hmm. So they have to be leader, leaders. Um, they also should make sure that they've got clear levels of accountability, that people actually understand what's expected of them. There's no you know, hidey holes, there's no sort of confusion around that. And then be strong enough to hold people to account 
but but in in the way of actually helping people be successful. Right. It's that push and pull all the time. It's a dynamic. Mm. It's like you know parenting kids as well. I don't mean that in a patronising way, but you're wanting people to evolve and become magnificent. Mm. And you've got to be able to look at each person and actually help them find that path to magnificence. So you have to hold them to account, you have to be fair, you have to be clear, and you know above all you have to lead them because they will want to work for you and produce those results if you're clear. And, and I, I heard you say fair there. You need to be consistent across all the people. You can't have favourites and you can't spend <laughs> more time with one and not another if they both need it and so on and so forth. And and you also have to be a respectful person. I won't say the term on, on, on this video, but you know a, bl a blog post I wrote just recently about derogatory terms, mm. people calling their sales people and I won't have any of that. No, no. I just won't tolerate crap like that. In this day and age, a sales manager needs to be a straight up and down person that, that really has great empathy with their people and, and uses the right sort of constructive words in the way they communicate with them and nothing derogatory. And the good sales people, of course, sorry, good sales managers back you know, in that 60s and 70s, you know, there were some crappy things there too, but the really good ones were these leaders yeah. and stewards of their people. I can remember some great ones that I just I would follow to yeah. the end of the earth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I can too, mm. and uh, we need more of them. Fantastic. So thank you very much for your advice, and to all the sales managers out there, be a renaissance sales manager. Thank you. <laughs>